4 million hectares of grass in the UK. A very small proportion of that is managed to the level that we're describing with grassmanship. And what we're trying to do is encourage livestock farmers to focus more on grass as a crop. With a cereal crop, you plant it, you look after it, and you can measure the yield at the end of the harvest. Grass, it's not quite as simple as that because the, the grass gets fed, it goes through maybe a cow to produce milk, and you have to take more consideration into what is happening through that process and how much yield you're getting from it. We can work that out, but it's not as black and white to the farmer to be able to see that. Grassmanship is about managing the grass more effectively to increase productivity, therefore increase profitability. So looking at the start where grass and destruction to reseed for a, for a new lay, we control in that new lay and then as, as that lay matures, making sure that you maintain the weed control programme as you go through the mature pasture. Grassland destruction is probably the most important decision that you will make in terms of your grassland management. But to make the decision, you've got a very high level of weed, grass species in there, a high level of other weeds such as docks and thistles. Cows, sheep tend to avoid areas where there's weedy bits, which if you build up that area around your whole field, you could be leaving quite a high percentage of field ungrazed and therefore reducing the efficiency of that field. We're actually looking at making sure that you get the best start possible for your reseed. Reseeds are not cheap, you get it right first time. Glyphosate is historically the product that's been used for grassland destruction. It does a good job in destroying the grass, but not so good on the docks and thistles and the more difficult weeds that you control. So it's best to use a product that's going to give you the maximum kill on those more difficult weeds, and that's what you get with Kylio. From data that we have, from a new reseed in May, you'd probably expect to have 2,500 kilos of usable dry matter. In a layer that has a quite a high proportion of weed grass species in it, you'd probably get about 1,100 kilos of dry matter. If you talk to livestock farmers and people who are growing grass for forage, it's a key conversation to have to make them understand that it's not just grass, it's the type of grass you've got in it as well that is, that's really important. In my experience in UK farms, many farmers will choose to sow clover along with their grass seed. New Farm has the solution there, whether you're mixing clover in the mixture or not for that new lay. There might be a lot of, it's green, it's growing, but actually, if you look at the sward, there could be a high proportion of non-productive grass in there, although it is a level of production, but not as good as a, a quality rye grass lay. You should manage grass as you do any arable crop, so make sure the nutrition status is right, the pH status is right within, within the field. The application is, is very important in terms of the effectiveness of, of any pesticide application, especially with grass and herbicides, because it tends to be that there's not so much attention to detail in application in grassland as there is in arable crop. So have the situation where it might be the right product at the right time, but not applied correctly. The application techniques that you use, making sure your spray is calibrated, making sure that everything is right, so literally treating it as a true crop. We have a product called Smart Grass, which is actually a grass growth promoter. It's not a fertiliser, it won't make bad grass good, but it will make good grass better. It's a gibberellic acid product which enhances the early season growth. So where farmers need grass early, which they all do, this time of year, late March, early April, they're probably running out of silage feed that they've had overwintered. The benefit of having new grass in their fields is very important to them and that's where smart grass fits in. Some of the more difficult weeds we have here in the UK are in grassland are docks, thistles, nettles, ragwort, chickweed. Looking at Pasture Master, as one of our products for use in new lays. We then have Thrust, which is a product that you can use in established lays. It's all about maintaining uh, as healthy a stock as you can through your grassland, keeping out poisonous weeds such as ragwort or injurious weeds such as thistles. When it comes to application, many grassland farmers don't always have very big sprayers to go and use. Some might have an ATV with a sprayer on the back, some might just use a knapsack. At New Farm, we still have solutions for use through knapsack handheld equipment. The key thing for getting a good result from a knapsack sprayer is a uniform application. That means keeping the boom still while you walk along so that you give a nice even swath of spray. Uh, weed wipers fit in admirably where you have rushes because they tend to be on wet ground. So for something like soft rush, uh, a, a better option is to use a weed wiper with glyphosate and that way avoid any risk of MCPA getting into watercourses. The new farm range is that gives you good flexibility in terms of the product range that we have. They are British made. We have the factory at Wyke just outside Bradford. That is the, the, the global production site for new farm. Over 80% of the grassland in the UK is sprayed with phenoxies produced by new farm. Part of the, the objective is really education. There are solutions available. You can get more out of your grass field than you are already getting. 
and many people do not realise the losses they're taking by not looking after grass properly. The trials package in the UK tend to fall under two scenarios. One is regulatory, that's all about trying to maintain the products we've got and bring new products to market in the future. We're also doing marketing trials where we're looking at new and existing products and how to get the most out of those um, up and down the country. And as part of the Grassmanship Initiative, we're also looking closely at doing some application work with the application specialist, Tom Robinson. Boom height is so important to getting a good result. The starting point there is to have a boom height that's, that's based on the grass. And if the weeds are higher, it doesn't matter too much because the way herbicides work, invariably they go up the plant rather than down. And it's important to get penetration into the, the bottom of the crop. And the other big benefit of keeping the boom low, which is really important, is that it reduces drift because if you double the wind speed, you get double the drift. If you double the boom height, you get four times the drift. Certain herbicides on their approval have a, a LERAP rating B. A LERAP is a local environmental risk assessment for pesticides. You have to leave a five meter buffer between the end of the spray and the water course or you can reduce that buffer down to one metre if you use drift reducing nozzles approved for LERAPs. They have to be used under certain constraints, typically boom height, not above half a metre. There's usually a pressure constraint on them, typically two bars or one and a half bar with which they get that LERAP rating. The other important thing, and it's tricky in grassland, is your bout marking. Cereals, you've got tram lines, in grassland, you need either a GPS, a light bar on the sprayer for guidance, and then there's a blob marker as well, which are other alternatives. But you must have something. Uh, if you don't have accurate bout marking, you will always underdose the field with chemical. The work that we're doing with Tom Robinson, we're looking really to, to find out how we can get even more efficacy through the use of nozzles, boom height, and other application technology, such as water volumes, to really offer more information back to the farmer to, to get the best out of the products they're buying. So stewardship is clearly very important. Stewardship is all about essentially keeping pesticides out of water is one of the main things. And in doing that, we can look at the work we're gaining through the application trials, um, water volumes. If we're maximizing efficiency and efficacy, then we're minimizing the amount of product going where it shouldn't be. But now all sprayers have to be tested once every five years and that started from 2016. It checks the things that the operator should be doing himself but crucially you should have a straight boom on your sprayer. We don't want any leaks on a sprayer and the filling site is the key single source of contamination of pesticides getting into water. The best place to wash it out is in the field where you finished your spraying so it comes back stewardship accurate calibration so that when you get to the end you can run clean water into it and spray it back out over some of the crop that you've just been spraying. For contractors coming onto the farm the key things from a stewardship point of view are that he needs to be supplied with a map of the water courses and the buffer zones on and he needs to have the three star Lee Rapp approved nozzles fitted to a spray. And what I like to see in a chemical store is a spillage kit. Block nozzles are a real nuisance and um, the best way to deal with them is to keep in your spares kit on the sprayer some spare nozzles in caps and so all you have to do is click the block nozzle off and put your new nozzle in and what I like doing is blowing them out with an airline Application is a key element of product stewardship and also product efficacy. And attention to detail is what gets us the excellent results. Our aspirations going forward for the Grassmanship Initiative really would be if we can get farmers treating grass like they do their cereal crops or potato crops, then we'll feel like we've done a great job.